One name to look at. This is my pick to be the standout rookie, Ethan Irwin. Remember that name. Ethan Irwin, I believe, could be a potential champion. Hey, guys. I'm Ethan Irwin. I am uh, EVP of uh, Silver Pictures, and I'm here to finally, at long last, compete in Schmodown. Fifteen rounds. Tell me what's going through your head. You know, as you keep knocking people down one by one by one, sometimes by twos. They're saying he could be the next Merle. I might have even said that at one point. I mean, he's got those type of skills. Five. It's Matt four, Lucas and three, Ben two, Lucas. And your winner, Ethan. Oh. But uh, but no, it's awesome, and I I can't wait. I feel like now that I've really started to make a name for myself, I I've just got to keep moving up the ladder. I, I feel like the next step is the Godfather himself. And your winner, well, ladies and gentlemen, well, Ethan Big Time crazy. Irwin! Winner of this match will play Ethan Irwin. Mark Andreco, I think, is a quiet three and two. I think he's had some re he's had some tough losses. Arguably, one of the best matches of all time against Bibiani. Mark Andreco arguably has shown up and played his best. The more people are on the table, the better Andreco seems to play. Oh. And the manager Emma five and right to the pressure cushion. Five, four, three, two, one, and your winner. I respect your playing abilities. As you said, we've known each other for a very long time. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous, but everybody has their weaknesses. Even Achilles had a heel, and I'm going to find yours. So it's going to be bloody, but I think I'm going to be left standing. That may be the case, but uh, as uh, as I said when uh, I went up against McWheeney, yeah, I, you, you know a lot, but I know a lot. You love to salivate. The stakes have never been juicier because Andreco is going up against Irwin, and it's all for a shot at the belt. Well, what's crazy is that, you know, obviously Mike Kalinowski has been causing chaos, right? Oh, Corruption well, with a capital K. But 
But Sam Levine caused way more chaos. Zaniness with a capital S. Sam and I sat down and we talked for a bit, and Sam made the decision that he was stepping away from the game. Obviously, he was going to be around to help out. He dropped both belts. He's no longer the singles champion. He's no longer the team's champion. And that put the singles championship up for grabs because Bibiani was supposed to challenge Sam. Mm -hmm. But when Sam left, that left Bibiani without any, anyone to challenge. We knew Irwin and Andreka would be playing for a, for a contender spot. But now they have someone to play. They're going to be playing Bibiani. Either way, can you imagine Ethan Irwin versus Bibiani to where you had the free-for-all battle between these two? Take that aside. Mark Andreka and Bibiani had arguably the best match in Schmodown history in their debut. Bibiani broke the record. We got, it got a, perfect, a near perfect round. We got a perfect round, just one multiple choice. But he, and Andreka was on fire. Any one of those matches for the title would be crazy. Yeah, look, we're spoiled either way. I'm actually glad Sam Levine went to the Villages and retired. I hope you're doing well at Bingo right now, buddy, because <laughs> we have Bibiani going up against one of these two. And you look at a guy like Ethan Irwin. He's right. the real wild card to me between him and Andreco. We know what Andreco brings to the table, but a lot like Mark Andreco, who started off so red hot in this league when he first came out of the gate, then he had some stumbles. Ethan Irwin, we're still waiting to see if he is truly a cyborg of movie trivia or he has some cinematic lapses yet to be discovered. Will a Fisher appear today? That's a great point, though, because Mark Andreco at this point is a veteran of the league. He debuted in 2016. Ethan is in his fourth match, but he's fresh to the league. He's a superstar already. The fans love him. The competitors are scared of him. I mean, he is he is somebody's three and zero. He has had amazing matches. He started off beating Yolanda Machado, and then his second match was a was a masterpiece in his win against uh, the Professor Lon Harris. What a match that was! And then he took out the Godfather, Sam Levine's. Uh, former partner, and then now here he is, Mark Andreco. This is a big test for Ethan because Mark Andreco is that good, but the question, like you said, is Ethan the real deal we find out today in this number one contender match against Mark Andreco, who is a solid, solid competitor. So many questions. Did Andreco shout before the match? Will Ethan Irwin be sporting his trademark producerial blue button down shirt? Is anybody going to make guacamole out of these avocados on my shirt, Christian? So many questions. We answered some of them with a pre interview. Check them out right now. This has been a fantastic year for the Fife Club. We had both Rachel and Clark in number one contender matches. Both of them had a shot at the belt. I've had two competitors have a crack at getting that championship, and frankly, third time's the charm. So this is a number one contender match. It's myself against Mark the Android Andreco. And look, by the way, I was going to put it out there. I like Andreco, okay? I've hired the guy to write for me in the past. I think he's great. I think he's very smart. He knows his stuff, but guess what? I know a lot more. Ethan is a really, really good player. He's like, he's like uh, the shark in Jaws, just... He has one purpose, and that is to destroy and rend and tear. So, uh, you know, I hope you know. Part of me hopes I destroy him, channel my inner Andrew Guy versus Merle, or uh, or I just don't lose by too much. So, uh, yeah, and there's and there's no pressure from the preamble she just gave me. <laughs> I have come in here and single-handedly, just from the beginning of this year, torn through this league, and now I'm going to take him down, and after that, Bibiani, and guess what? Then the title's mine. And that's, I think, what we've all been talking about this whole time. Sam Levine even told me that one of the reasons he quit was because he knew he'd have to face me. Knowledge isn't everything in this league. There's a lot of, it's a lot of a personality game. There's a lot of psychological warfare that goes on. There's lots of, you know, feuding and that sort of thing. There's a lot of psyching out. And thus far, he's been very focused and very internalized. So we'll see if the knowledge can get him through all the way. Because, you know, you gotta get a thick skin in this because we're, we're all, we all want the belts. Look, I know that there are people who think that I don't have enough personality and that I, I, I don't have enough character. I'm not, a, I'm not a face. I'm not a heel. That's nonsense. I have tons of personality, but it doesn't matter for this game. There's only one thing that matters, and that is what's in here. Ethan, you are a very worthy competitor. I am a little nervous, a little humbled before you, but the, the fate of the wheel, there are some categories I know that you don't, so uh, it's up to the gods to decide. And Draco. I'm going to annihilate you. I, I feel bad about it, I guess, a little bit because we've worked together and I respect you, but you're going down. There is going to be nothing left but just a pile of Android parts on the ground. And I'm sorry to have to do this to you, but it's what's going to happen, and you guys are going to watch it. 
I like the arrogance by Ethan Irwin. Yeah. Uh, you see, like, he's at this Hubris. point. At this point, he is saying, I am the best in the league. He's, he even went as much to say that Sam Levine retired because he didn't have to face him. Um, I like the I like the moxie on Ethan Irwin, but I also like Mark Andreco, where he is how much he wants to play Bibiani again. He wants to, he wants that match. He says he knows he can beat Bibiani, and he wants he's got to beat Ethan to do it. And this it's heating up to be a classic. Well, as we've seen recently in the Shmona, things don't always go the way you think they're going to. The odds are never quite in your favor. Ethan Irwin, right now, he's kind of like Ivan Drago, but we all know what happened to Ivan Drago. He was on the second Death Star when it blew up. Christian, what are ETH one of these competitors good at? Well, they both have similar strengths. You have Mark and Draco, comic book movies, musicals, and thinking his competitors are valets. If you saw that in that last uh, collision, you'll know what I'm talking Throwing about. Throwing his keys to a lot of people. Christian wrote a joke about farting in the car and leaving it for the valet. Very funny piece of material. I appreciate it. And then you got Ethan Irwin. Ethan Irwin, whose strengths are Arnie and Sly movies. You've got action adventure. You have Oscar movies. And being pissed off when someone calls him a valet. Will anybody know if Arnie and Sly were ever in a musical? We're about to find out. Christian, I am mentally prepared are you physically set oh my god it's fantastic oh there all it right, is there we go we're all, all right. begging for that one all right here we go ladies and gentlemen it's time for the movie trivia schmona good crowd good turnout today three rounds in a number one contender match introducing first representing the fight club with a record of four wins, two defeats, he is the number three ranked contender, Mark the Android and Draco. against Stacey Howard and the machine earning his spot here today. And his opponent with a record of three wins, no defeats, and one knockout. He is the number two ranked contender, Ethan Big Time Ethan Irwin emerges yes. with not only his trademark uniform, but MC Hammer yeah. from 1990s classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's got to bode well for him early in the match. Well, I mean, that's the song he's been coming out to. It's been good for him since his first match here as he stared down the android. It's no entourage, and it's the wonderful Fife Club there with the android. All right, Mark, how does round number one work? I will read the rules while Christian stares dead-eyed into the camera <laughs> for 45 today. seconds. I'm not going to do that today. What was that? In round number one. Where, where was I? The field is going to hear eight questions from eight different corners of the movie Trivia Galaxy. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. As soon as we ask you the question up here at the answer desk, please write down your best attempt at a correct answer on the whiteboard with the marker we have so kindly provided for you, free of of charge minus shipping and handling. I will remind the competitors of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the match. If you need to hear a question again, you want to buy yourself some time, use a JTE rule, and you also each have one challenge. If you don't like the way a question was ruled, use your challenge, but use it wisely. Back to you, Christian George, wake up. I'm there, I'm there. All right, here we go. So Ethan, are you ready to go? Always be closing. And Mark, are you ready to go? Let's get it over with. Then <laughs> let's get ready to schmoda. Here we go. All right. All right. Question number one in the realm of action adventure. Dun, 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 dun. Let's start it off with who plays Alan Grant in Jurassic Park? All right. Just we're just out here throwing the frisbee around yeah. early in the match. Give give him something to do. <laughs> okay, this is this is to make sure your markers work. Yes. Yeah. Oh, what is his name? Oh, Five, oh, oh, boy. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Pen down, please. And Ethan. Sam Neill. Correct. Mark. I completely blanked. Didn't have it. Wow. All right, all right. There you go. 
so all right. Now we give Andrea. My Draco car is running. The <laughs> you're like, you've got an Uber. It's outside. It's waiting for you. Right. Your next question comes from the it's world no of deal. movie release dates. Yes. Your question is: the first Mission Impossible film starring Tom Cruise came out in what year? Well, he's didn't put in Both had it. I look at this more as an Emilio Estevez franchise. That's true. Five. <laughs> uh, four. He's Wait. back in a big way in the new one. Three. Way. Two. One. Pens down. Mark. 96. That's correct. Ethan. 96. Got it. Okay. Next yeah. question. All right. E Ethan. We were alive then. One? I remember right. that. Next question. I was old then. Dramas. Dramas is the next category. John Wayne, Henry Fonda, and Sean Connery star together in which war film? Ooh. We're a long way from that first Jurassic Park question. I huh? know. Five, four, three, two, one. Mark Andreco. Guns of Navarone? It's incorrect. Ethan? The Longest Day? That's correct. All right. I never heard of that, so I don't feel bad about myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever heard of Guns of Navarone. Maybe next. Ethan can Guns of Navarone. Yeah. All right. Your next question comes from the world <laughs> of animated movies. God. These are movies that are drawn by hand or on a computer. Your question is, Henry Selick directed what 2000s stop-motion animated film? Well, uh, nah, forget Repeat it. it. Five. Nothing. Nope. Four. Good. Three. Two. One. Ethan. Coraline? Correct. Mark. Coraline. Got it. He four, got it. Four, two. The four, guns two. of Coralino. Four, two. Next question here. Fantasy sci-fi. Who plays Miracle Max in The Princess Bride? Oh, yeah. See, but the, again, everybody's, I've seen that movie yeah. once because Bonnie Somerville forced me. Five. Against my will. Four. Three. I did enjoy it. Stop it. Two, one. Pens yeah, repeat down. the question. Yep. Who plays Miracle Max in The Princess Bride? Anyway, what I was saying. Five, four, three, two, one. Mark Andreco. Wallace Shawn. Incorrect. Ethan. Billy Crystal. Correct. One okay, point. and Ethan. it is five to two. And Christian, it is inconceivable that already <laughs> Ethan Irwin would be three, three points. points up on Mark Andreco, but he is as it's we move one, to our next category. Yeah. And this is in the world of comedies. Bah ha ha ha! What U.S. city are the ladies visiting for the majority of the hit film *Girls Trip*? Caught up on that movie. Enjoyed that movie. Oh, it's a stare. Five. Uh, Tiffany Haddish. Four. A star is born. Three. Two, one, Ethan Irwin. New Orleans. Correct, Mark. New Orleans, more specifically, Essence Fest. Well That's done. Right. That's, That's right. true, right? right. So it is. Okay. So it is 6-3, six, 6-3. Three, six, three. It doesn't work that way. 6-3, next question here. Horror slash thriller. Yeah. 2008's Let the Right One In features which kind of classic horror creature? You ever Republican. afraid of the dark when you were a kid? Huh? Whoa. Are you afraid of the Whoa. dark? But accurate. I don't I can't hear with all the jokes. Afraid, afraid of the dark? Did you ever Fine. think there was something in your closet under Four. the bed? No. Three. Last there was night. something in my Two. closet, not anymore. Pens <laughs> Pens <laughs> <laughs> down. I'll be opening for Mark Ellis yeah. at San Diego Comic Con. And Billy Crystal, what do you got? Mark Andrew. Vampire. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Ethan. Vampire. You got it. All right. So seven of four. Ethan Irwin, though, if he gets this right, he has scored a perfect round. Last That's question right. here. Ethan may be winning, but Mark Andreco cracking the jokes the parents are explaining to the little ones. Your last question. It's 2018, guys. You know what's up. It is a Patreon question. The following question comes to you from our buddy and Patreon supporter, Jake Hammer. Thank you, Jake Hammer. You know why they call him the Hammer? Because he's tough as nails. Thank you, Jake, for supporting the show and for making that Ninja Turtles rap. In the category of Jake's choosing coming of age, ooh, ooh. his question is, Michael Caine and Robert Duvall play eccentric uncles to a boy named Walter in what film? Looks like they both have this one. Uh, I am an uncle. Do you consider me more Michael Caine or more Five. Robert Duvall? I don't know. Four, three. Our interplay has never two, been better. Sorry. One. Pens down. Ethan. Secondhand Lions. Correct. And Drake. Secondhand Lions. Got it. Ethan and Irwin has scored a perfect round. So with that, there's going to be a bonus question for only Ethan here. Ethan, you don't need to write it down. You oh. just need to answer this question. Here's your bonus question, Ethan. Okay. Who directed three billboards outside Ebbing, Surrey? Martin McDonough. 
for one point. Ethan uh, Irwin goes missed. up, yeah. has not missed. And now round number two comes in. It's the wheel round. Mark and Drago having a nice round with five points. He's got five Ethan, points. Ethan hits the 9-5. And here we go with round number two. Round number two, Mark, how does it work? In round number two, it is also known as the wheel round, the wheel of fate, destiny, perhaps justice. Each competitor is going to get a spin at that there wheel. Whatever category you spin contains four questions from that world of movie trivia. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question, but there is stealing available in round two. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us to provide you with multiple choice. We'll tell you four possible answers, one of which is correct. If you get that one, it is worth just one point. Uh, because Ethan Irwin is in a commanding lead and throwing a perfect game so far, he gets to choose. Is he going to spin the wheel first or defer to the android? I'm going to go first and get this over. All right, so All right. Ethan is going to hit the wheel Taking here. The keys to his own ride. Oh. Keeping the valet jokes going. Christian and I at the desk. I promise not to pull a Snyder. <laughs> All, All right. right. Uh, Christian, I will note there are two wheel slices that are sponsored by two of our Schmodown patrons right now. They are Tim Burton and Action Adventure Movies. Tim Burton and Action Adventure Movies. All right. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, we passed Tim uh -oh. Burton, but we could be at Action Adventure, Christian. And Action Adventure. You're going to stay with Action Adventure? All, All right. right. Alex, you Action got it. Action Adventure. It. And that is supported by our buddy Lance Door. Knock, knock. Who's at the door? It's Lance, but he puts an E on the end of that door. Thank you for supporting the show, Lance Door. Big fan of yours as well. All right, here we go, Ethan. Action Adventure, four questions in Action Adventure. Who played Lara Croft's father, Lord Richard Croft, in the first Tomb Raider film with Angelina Jolie? John Voight. Two points. Next one. Who plays the bumbling cop who used to work for Alan's father in the 1995 Jumanji? Five, four. Eugene Levy. Incorrect. Oh. For the steal. Big steal here, Christian, if you can pull it off. The bumbling nope. cop? Five, um, four. Steve Martin. Looking for David Allen mm. Greer. David Allen oh, Greer. Great on him. Right. You know what? Even Color. multiple tries, I would not have gotten yeah. that. David Allen who? Greer. Yeah, I know. I'm he Greer. had a TV show called Dag. It was yeah. a wonderful program. Oh, Dag, right. yes. Th question number three. <laughs> who plays Dag. the CIA operative Dylan in 1987? Carl Weathers. <laughs> three, two points. <laughs> uh, Ethan is back after yeah. that rare misstep. Yeah. All right. In what <laughs> Stallone film... Does the main villain continuously call Stallone's character Pig as he taunts him in the final scene? Cobra. Two points. So there you go. Wow. Ethan Irwin only missing one there. 15 to 5 as Mark Andreco is up now on the wheel. Crime is a disease. Movie trivia is knowledge. And meet the cure, Ethan Irwin, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and here goes Andreco. And uh, Draco, need, Draco needs a big round. <laughs> yeah. What an opportunity not he even on had Foster, with David Allen Gerr, just couldn't get it. They want Jody Foster, and they might just get it. Christian. Oh, oh. John Carpenter. All right, here we go. And now Andreco steps up to give his best. The crowd sees Jody Foster, Christian. They want uh, the Silence of the Lamb star. It's, it's and we're going to see what we land on here. And could it be opponent's choice? Could it be musicals? Tim Burton. Tim, Tim Burton. Burton. Well, Tim Burton. He's going to stick with Tim well, to. Burton movies. Got it. Tim Burton movies. And uh, that's very interesting. You know why, Christian? Because that's the other. This is the first time in the history of the Shmodan, I believe, that the both, both Patreon slices were used in the match. And this one belongs to Jeremy Hastings. Great he, reactor. He's a good reactor. Hastily Richard. joined the movie trivia. Yeah. Shmodan <laughs> patron, as should you. Thank you, Jeremy Hastings. We appreciate your support. All right, here you go. Four questions in the realm of Tim Burton films. Mark. All right, Mr. Andreco, your first question, the world of Tim Burton's imagination. In Big Fish, what actor plays the elderly version of Ewan McGregor's character? Albert Finney. Two points. Yeah. He does. <laughs> your next question. In Beetlejuice, the Maitlands discover a book named The Handbook for the... Recently War. Deceased. Two points. <laughs> And Draco hitting the categories pretty good out here. Coming we would, back. We would not have accepted recently diseased. Your question <laughs> is, what kind of salad does Joyce feed Edward 
in Edward Scissorhands. Multiple choice. Is it A, a Waldorf salad, B, a Cobb salad, C, an Ambrosia salad, or D, a Caesar salad? Ambrosia? One point. One point. <laughs> Literally clawing his way back yep. into this yep. match. This is big here. Two more points. Up for grabs if Andreco can get it. He'll be trailing by just three, entering into round number three. Your last question is, what is the name of the judge that Alan Rickman Turpin. plays? I did oh. not finish the question. That's very rude, but it is also correct. Yeah. <laughs> Three points. Mark Andrejko clawing all the wow. way back with a big deficit down by 10 and only down by three now. Round number three. He did it with Carl Weathers. I'm allowed yeah, to yeah. do it with a musical. So exactly now, correct. So now we have a match here as we get the three-point deficit only. As we get into round number three, Mark, how's it work? In round number three, each competitor is going to give us here up at the answer desk a series of numbers that range range from 1 to 20. You're going to give us three numbers in total. Each number corresponds to a different movie trivia category that we have our eyes on. We're going to ask you three of those questions. Your first question is worth two points. Your next question is worth three points. And your last question is worth a big, meaty five points. That could be the determining question in this match because Ethan Irwin still has a three-point lead over Mark Andreco. You're going to be giving us your numbers from 1 to 20 first. What would the producer like? Uh, 1, 7, and 17. 1, 7, and 17. All odds, interesting decision. Mark Andreco. 2, 3, and 5. 2, 3, and 5. All right. So we're going to start with Mark Andreco here with his two-pointer. Two-pointer to get within one. Mark Andreco, you chose category number two. That's Sandra Bullock. Oh, I love her. <laughs> what country is Sandra Bullock from in the proposal? Um, Canada? Correct. Two points. <laughs> that, nice. that was not a fakey. That, that was, was a full-blown. Yeah. All right. So now to take his first lead here. Our, our greatest enemy right now. First, uh, <laughs> By the time this airs, who knows? Yeah. All right. First lead. First lead here. And now you have the category, Mark. You chose three. You chose three. All right. Mark. What is the one-word term? What is the category? Oh, I'm sorry. Category is, <laughs> category is new releases. New releases. What is the one word term for the consciousness of the mind in Ghost in the Shell? That's a new release? Within the last two years, yes. Oh, okay, that's what, that's what it covers, two years? Yeah. Okay. Um, Five, four. Repeat the question. What is the one word term for the consciousness of the mind in Ghost in the Shell? Ghost. Correct. Oh! For three points. That is correct. Christian hits it and the crowd loses their minds. What a match now. Right. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan <laughs> Irwin now. Sometimes they just tell you. Ethan <laughs> Irwin to tie the game. Mark Andreco has literally, I believe this in my heart and soul, guessed his way into a lead here yes. in round number three. It worked for our president, so uh, hey. All right. And uh, here we go. Hey, Christian, now I'm going to ask Ethan his question. As soon as I'm done leaving, a nasty comment about Mark Andreco making it all political. Ethan, <laughs> your question. Don't go on his Facebook page. You chose uh, the number one because that's what you believe you are. You are indeed the favorite. That corresponds to your two-point question in the world of family films. Great. Let's do it. Yeah. In family films, your question is, in the Paddington films, what is Paddington's favorite food? <laughs> Five, four, three... Two, one. Repeat it. You said repeat. Too late? Too late. Fine. Too Honey. late. The answer was marmalade or marmalade sandwiches. Oh. He's a bear that loves marmalade, and it's right. GD adorable. So, and Ethan needs to take the lead here. If, if he hits his three, he needs to take the lead. All right. Now, Ethan, you did choose for your three-point question number seven. Mm -hmm. And the number of Joe Theismann corresponds up here to Angelina Jolie. Great about her movies, not her personal life. And your question is, name the critically panned yet Golden Globe nominated film 
starring Angelina Jolie and Johnny Depp traveling by train to Venice. The Tourist. Three points, and he's back in the lead, Christian, where he feels most comfortable. All right. And so now we go to Mark Andreco, who needs to hit the five-pointer. Mm -hmm. Mark needs to hit the five-pointer. If he hits it, it bounces back to Ethan. If he misses it, Ethan will go on to play Bibiani for the vacant singles championship. All right, here we go. Mark, you chose Thriller. You chose Thriller. The song? <laughs> the category. <laughs> All right. The murder of a powerful gang leader in New York City that goes by Cyrus serves as the inciting incident of which 70s action thriller? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. The murder of a powerful gang leader in New York City that goes by Cyrus served... Oh, the Warriors. Correct. So now Ethan Irwin wow. has to hit the five-pointer. If he hits it, he wins. If he... Shh, shh, shh. The crowd. Christian having to quiet the crowd no. as though they were children in the backseat if, acting up. If Ethan hits it, he wins. If he misses, Mark Andreco will get his rematch with Bibiani. Whew, All boy. right, here we go. Just nervous reading this question, Christian, because the question is super easy. <laughs> <laughs> Your question comes is from the world of Disney movies. Oh, I was hoping you'd do the films of Ethan Irwin, but that's fine. If Let's you go. produce Dir direct the video doesn't count. What? You wrote that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, your question. Okay. For five points, the win, and the right to play William Bibiani for the belt. Name all three darling children from Disney's Peter Pan. Wendy. Five. Four. Repeat the question. Name the three darling children from Disney's Peter Pan. I don't know. You might have this one, bro. You might. Five, four, three, two. Repeat again. Name the three darling children from Disney's Peter Pan. Five. Uh, Richard and Steven. And you're Michael wow. and John were the answers. Wow. And Christian, if you think happy thoughts in Peter Pan, you can fly. Mark Andreco thought enough happy thoughts to get himself a matchup with Viviani. Ethan Irwin, noble in defeat. He missed a couple crucial questions in round three when he had such a great match going up until that point. So how about that? Bibiani versus Andreco 2. Barn burner. That was one of the best first matches we ever had with Andreco and uh -huh. Bibiani. And now yep. we get the rematch, but you talk about good matches. Ethan Irwin looked like he was taking this away. He had a 10-point lead after that second round. And Draco hits Tim Burton, catches up, goes within three. Ethan has a tough third round, only hitting one out of his three questions. Mark and Draco having a phenomenal second and third round. And Mark and Draco is going up against Bibiani for the title. Just something about that confident stroll he had there. He understated going up to the wheel in the second round. He spun Tim Burton. He probably should write Jeremy Hastings a letter of thank you, our Patreon supporter, because he wanted that slice on the wheel. And Draco certainly wanted that slice. Got him back in in the match when we thought that that missed steal from David yep. Allen Greer might cost him the entire thing. He comes back to pitch my basketball number 22 in a victorious effort. All right, so now let's talk to Jen Sturger, who was with Ethan Irwin and the winner, the Android, Mark Andreco. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with Mark Andreco. Mark, you look absolutely stunned right now. I was telling uh, Rachel and Emma, I think this is uh, my version of uh, Jacob's Ladder. I'm actually dying, and this is the last thing I'm thinking before I pass on, because that I, I honestly thought 
Ethan is such a good player and has such a wide depth of knowledge and is so unflappable. If that if that was a different category than Disney in the last question, I it would be him here. Let's be honest, though. You came in here today, and you were just so down on yourself, and you were you, you said it in the beginning. Let's get this over with. Well, I think I said what everybody was thinking. <laughs> I mean, I'm no, no, that's not being falsely humble. I mean, on, on paper, Ethan is a really damn good champion. That was once again, it's why the, it's why this game is so much fun. The wheel and the random questions in that final round, they can make they can ch change the dynamic substantially. You were down 10 points when you oh, were- really? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> when you, when you, thank God you can't see the scoreboard. No, I, I could, <laughs> but I wasn't even, I, when you're up there, you don't see anything, you know? So you were down 10 points going into the second oh, round. Well, I'm gonna brag, 10 <laughs> points. <laughs> Fuck Ethan Irwin. <laughs> that was easy. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But then you spun Tim Burton yeah. and you were just on fire, electric the rest of the round. And then you got to round three. And I feel like you sort of used the Stacey Howard method. Which is what? Just guessing your ass off. No, I, I thought, you know, I thought about it. That's where I'm glad we have the repeat the question because that helped me That helped me both times. It helped me with Wallace Shawn because I haven't seen Princess Bride in 30 years. But uh, but with with the first question, or with Ghost in the Shell, I was like, I don't know any of that. And I thought, oh, the title's Ghost in the Shell, Shell must refer. So maybe it's obviously what it is. And it was. <laughs> so the scientific method works. Listen to your teachers, great school kids. And Emma, you are absolutely beaming over there. Tell me, what does this win mean to the Fife Club? It means that the Fife Club, the third member of the Fife Club, is now going to have a shot at the championship. I mean, and again, I, I, I said it before the match, third time is the charm, and I really think that Mark Andreco is destined to come out on top this time. Look, he was nervous going into the match today, with good reason. Ethan Irwin is an incredible competitor, but there was one glimmer of hope for me, which was the fact that this now means that Andreco is gonna get to have that rematch with William Bibiani, and he has wanted that for a long time. And there he is, speaking of William Bibiani. Oh, may I please? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're not the only one who's wanted that rematch. You and me, we had something magical. We had the best damn match in the history of the Schmodown, and I want another one, and I want that championship. Okay, I'm not jibber-jabber. It wasn't the best match because I lost. It will be the best match when I win. It was the best match for me. It was the best match for me. And I, uh, I don't care. Oh, <laughs> that's that's very unfortunate because I want this. This would be nice look, for me. Look, look, you can do all your theatrics and your shtick here, and I'm waiting for you to start juggling flaming torches. <gasps> Ooh, I should have brought there. flaming torches. But when it comes down to knowledge, I'm really good at the third round, as I proved here. How are your, what's your third round record again? Well, I usually don't have to get there anymore. <laughs> because I'm so good, you see. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you, not not so good. You have bad, and everything what's, bad. What's my record? I don't what's actually what's know or care. Because your record against six? me is really not good. Six and two? Your record against six me. Six and two? Yeah, 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 yeah. I want the championship! Oh, here you go. So much screaming. The guy's gonna have an aneurysm. I hope he I hope he makes it till I beat him. Oh my aneurysm! Ethan, that match was absolutely nothing to hang your head about. I mean you hung in there till the very end. But I know that's gotta feel disappointing to you. Yeah, I uh, I think I was as surprised as anybody. It was uh you know, look, that was a uh, that was a tough one and Look, you, you get the questions you get, and you only know what you know. But look, Andrego did a good job. He had, I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised, by some of the stuff that he knew. Um, and it didn't go the way I wanted. It didn't go the way I thought it was going to go, for sure. But hey, that happens. And also, I just talked to um, the people who are going to actually buy Collider, and they're going to tear down this entire building anyway, so it's fine. So I'm sure you'll, I'm sure you'll land on your feet. I'm sure you'll be fine. So, so round one and round two, you absolutely destroyed, and then you got to round three, and obviously that's kind of where the wheels fell off. Yeah, I know. I, I gotta say, family films are, are apparently not not what I know. So yeah, I know it was tough, and they were uh, the questions I got were for films that I have not seen. So I just yeah, I don't know. So obviously, you know, we've heard the big announcement. You will be teaming up with the Machine in Anarchy, yeah, yeah. and your manager will be none other than Jay Washington. This is pretty exciting news for you, right? What? Jay Washington? This is brand new news to me. I guess it's just something I'm gonna have to get. Hi. Oh. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, hi. Hey. Well, you seem like a swell guy. Let's, this is upside. Listen, listen. 
you should be honored to be with me and Janine. You should be just so ecstatic. You get to be with the potential rookie of the year. I mean, you had a chance, but you lost. But listen, we get to make you so much better around here, especially when we help you to win this whole tournament. We're all doing each other a favor. You're going to love it. I might even get you a Viper Squad shirt or a tattoo. You dig? Have a good one. Who was that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I'll go with the shirt if that's the choice. But yeah, no, look, I'm excited. I'm super excited about pairing up with Janine. I actually feel like we're, we really complement each other in terms of our knowledge. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Please don't get a Viper Squad tramp stamp. We'll see. Well, no surprise there. Bibiani was on hand, and face to face they went. Mark and Draco and Bibiani ready to do it. They both want this matchup. And Draco wants the rematch. Bibiani wants to prove he can do it again, and this time full circle for the title. As for Ethan Irwin, he wants to get right back in there and do it all over again. He's ready for the he's ready for the team tournament now. He's ready to take the, the anarchy, which is coming up not too long from now. But Ethan played a hell of a match. He just got knocked off of that pedestal this time around. Yeah, I mean, you got to wonder. We talked about at the top of the match, Ethan Irwin, such a striking effort in his first couple matches. There's only one where to go and it's down. Now he'll probably retreat to his palatial ivory tower mansion that all producers in Hollywood have. Rethink his strategy, lick his wounds, come back strong in the team tournament. But now you and I get to prep for one of the biggest matchups in the history of the movie trivia showdown. And that would be Mark Andreco versus William Bibiani for Sam Levine's jewels. Or it is not not Sam Levine's jewels anymore. Is it not? It is not Did anymore. I read that wrong? It is off the table now. It is a vacant championship and one of those guys, either the end Android or the Beast will be your new movie trivia schmodown oh. champion. Mm. My God, mm. Mm. unbelievable. And remember, you guys have a chance to get the tickets for September 8th. Get your tickets live. now, September 8th live. See Dan Merle compete live and also go and check out Jason Inman as he defends the championship against the winner of the Inner Geek. We're going to be there too. That's Christian Harloff. I'm Mark Ellis. Make sure you guys check out the Schmodown Patreon. You heard some patrons' names read today. You could be one of those. Join the Schmodown Patreon. Figure out which tier is right for you. Also, check out the Schmodown Rundown on iTunes and Apple Podcasts and the Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook page, of which I am proud to say I am a member. Call this one of the matches of the year? Oh, so far, absolutely. Is yeah. the year over already? Dear God, I need uh, to yeah, make New Year's good. plans. Man. What's up, Showdown fans? Frank here, and it is time for your Schmo Down Breakdown. And your winner! Ethan Irwin looking to become the eighth player in singles league history to go 4 and 0, but he was up against Mark and Draco, who's just trying to get his winning streak to three wins and get that rematch with Bibiani. To start things off, Ethan went perfect in the first round, including the bonus. With that performance, his first round accuracy this season is 85%. As for Andraco, he started with a pedestrian 5 points. In Andraco's 6 matches in the Q8 era, he has scored more than 5 points just twice. Into the second round, things got much more competitive as Ethan put up 6 points, while Andraco countered with 7 of his own, and Ethan's lead stood at 3 as we head into the final round. Things fell apart for Ethan Irwin in the final round, going 1 of 3, whereas in Draco, he went 3 for 3 for the full 10 points. It's just the second time this season a player has done that, and interestingly enough, that other player is Ethan Irwin. Not only is this in Draco's third straight win, it is also his third comeback win in his career the most of any player. Going inside the numbers, let's look at Ethan Irwin. Going back to his first round, it was the fourth perfect round of the year in the singles league, and even more surprisingly, he's the third of the four players to lose their match after having a perfect first round. At the end of the day, Ethan Irwin answered 13 of 16 for 81% correct. As for Andraco, he's the 20th comeback win in singles league history. That's out of more than 130 matches. And Draco answered 12 of 16 for 75% correct. And not to mention, it's only the second time a player this season with a lower accuracy rate 
has won their match. If you want to find out other stats about this match and from around the league, check out SD Rundown Stats on Twitter. And don't forget to check out the Schmundown Rundown every Saturday on the Collider Podcast Network on YouTube and the Collider Factory Podcast feed. This has been your Schmo Down Breakdown.